Hi, uh, my name is Miodrag Dakic from Center for Environment from Bosnia and Herzegovina. I'm really sorry I could not uh, join you in Paris, even though that I was planning to come. Uh, but I would like to share with you some information about situation in Bosnia in a region related to energy, uh, climate change and water. So, first of all, it's important to understand the political context that Bosnia and Herzegovina and uh, countries in the region are, are in, in. It's uh, related to energy community. Uh, the platform between European Union and uh, Western Balkan countries, uh, but recently joined also uh, Ukraine and Moldova, and Georgia is uh, interested too. So, uh, European Union is securing this East uh, uh, borders and uh, e somehow spreading in influence, its influence eastward. So even though that European Union is involved, uh, not all European standards are promoted that we find quite questionable and quite problematic. And we are trying to communicate with the European Union uh, to ask for help uh, from their side to make a pressure on governments to really implement high uh, social and mental standards in relation to energy projects but we have a uh, well they're quite reluctant to to do anything about it so but we are not giving up of course mm, in the same time we have a situation that uh, china is getting into region uh, and also russia uh, china is getting with a with a money and uh, it's both giving loans and coming with a with companies to actually transfer technology, Chinese technology, into the region. So we are afraid if the European Union would not be stronger uh, in, in promotion of the uh, uh, high environmental and social standards, then we could end up with uh, quite low standards that uh, are presented or promoted by Chinese or, or Russian companies. So we really hope that uh, this will soon change. Um, I would like to show you uh, about regional situation about hydropower. This is a um, this is a map of the region with the uh, red dots that represent uh, planned new hydropower plants and uh, black dots that are existing hydropower plants. So it's a it's an enormous number of the new hydropower plants planned to be built in the region. Uh, about 2,000 in total, uh, when including Western Balkans, but also um, including Bulgaria and Romania. But anyway, that's a, that's a huge uh, enorm uh, number of new hydropower plants that are planned on all sizes of the rivers. So we are especially especially uh, worried about uh, small hydropower plants that are planned on some really pristine. Uh, rivers and uh, protected areas, but I will come to that later. So this is a part. This uh, image I was showing you. It's a part of the of the campaign "Save the Blue Heart of Europe," uh, that is that is run by Riverwatch organization from Austria and uh, Pro Natur, and uh, they're quite uh, they're quite active in the region uh, related to water and energy projects. Uh, when I come to, I would now switch to Bosnia Herzegovina level uh, to explain how difficult situation is to to uh, in country. So, one of the problems is that um, country doesn't have a country strategy uh, for energy because of I mentioned already this complicated setup, the situation that we have two separate strategies for two entities, how it's called these two parts of Bosnia. And uh, there is no unifying strategy. And uh, therefore we have Bosnia and Herzegovina really have a problem in this international relations and re international representing position of Bosnia and Herzegovina, because we don't have unified voice, because war that ended in 90s continue, I mean, armed war that ended in 90s continued uh, in this kind of political war, where it's still some kind of battle between these ethnic groups, and that really are uh, slowing down any kind of progress uh, that um, that this country really needs. So, country doesn't have a strategy, 
and uh, its electricity production is divided about 50-50 uh, between uh, coal-fired, uh, mostly lignite-fired uh, thermal power plants and hydropower plants. Uh, as I said, there are an enormous number of the planned hydropower plants also in Bosnia. There is no exact number, but uh, I would say between three and 400 uh, new uh, hydropower plants are planned all over Bosnia. Uh, what is what we saw until now is that environmental impact assessment uh, process is done really poorly. So actually, uh, there was there was zero um, projects, hydropower pro projects that are uh, cancelled because of the EIA uh, uh, actually uh, found that uh, potential negative impacts are too big. So all projects are giving uh, getting the green light and actually measures to minimize the negative impacts on the environment and community are really uh, weak. Uh, also, in the same time, only hydropower is seen as a renewable energy uh, for further development. So really, there is no plans for new solar or wind turbine parks or in serious biomass projects or, or so on. So we see that uh, as a big threat because government is still focusing on uh, on old projects before 90s. M most of these hydropower projects are uh, are planned in that time, and now they are taking it from the sh uh, shelves and presenting it as, as a new ideas for a future. So we have a real problems to put uh, higher on agenda uh, discussion about new renewables and energy efficiency. Energy efficiency is really not popular, even though that can give really big benefits, uh, both financial and, and energy benefits. Uh, related to climate change, uh, the, in the past, uh, I would say, five years, we, have, we had like four really dry years and one uh, year with actually last year we had floods, enormous floods that uh, affected uh, one quarter, 25, about 25 percent of the population of Bosnia Herzegovina. That was really huge, but uh, there was there was no real message about uh, that it's a climate change and we have to change way of thinking uh, about nature and about uh, human activities in relation to nature. So unfortunately, we didn't manage to put climate change in in a, in this flood perspective and to put uh, or influence some plans of the government to work more serious, seriously on restoration on the, of the some floodplains or uh, in general changing its, uh, its position on the river management. Uh, now at the end I will try I will share with you some information about uh, activities of Cef Center for Environment. Uh, in relation to hydropower plants uh, and energy, it's uh, that we are part of the uh, project that is already third year now. Um, it's also a campaign. It's uh, named the Southeast Europe Sustainable Energy Policy, uh, through which we are trying to really promote uh, um, positive aspects uh, of. I mean, to promote renewables, to uh, try to push governments to. Um, get higher uh, commitments towards energy, renewable energy and climate change. Uh, as I said, it's not going really well uh, because, as I said, European Union is not really making also pressure to, to, to the governments to do their job. Um, we, have, we have several campaigns related to hydropower. Uh, one is on the Sana River and uh, it's it's really one of the problematic. It's small hydropower plants, but it's a very source of the sp of, of the river, and uh, even local municipality is uh, actually started twice the the legal case against the government because the, the municipality had totally different plan for development of the of the of that area where the where the river is. They they wanted to. Uh, work more on sustainable tourism, but government actually g gave concession to uh, to foreign investor from Austria to to build a small hydropower plant. Unfortunately, we didn't manage so far to stop it, and they started to to build it. Uh, we see also here a problem about of the 
of the access to water because uh, even though that concessioner get, got the concession for electricity production in this situation when the the dams and the hydropower plants are uh, situated in a, uh, on the rivers that are really pristine and uh, like clean water we are worried whether they will take advantage of that situation and uh, trying to control access to water um, also, recently there was a Euronatur visiting uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina uh, and uh, showing uh, the problem with the uh, with the double standards. For example, in in Austria, where this Kellogg company is coming from, uh, in Austria they are investing in uh, repopulation of the Huchen, uh, Hucho Hucho in Latin, uh, that is biggest salmonid and endemic salmonid species of the Danube. Um, of the Danube River and Danube catchment area. Um, also, I would just shortly also mention the Sutjeska campaign. Uh, actually, the Sutjeska is a national park with the second largest prime forest in Europe. And uh, it's a given concession to build five small hydropower plants in the national park and two of them uh, inside the prime forest. So this is really showing the, the level of the ignorance of the government where actually there is no area uh, uh, with the natural or cultural or whatever values that uh, could be considered protected for this kind of wild development uh, of energy projects. So we are really trying to, uh, to stop the project. Now we collected uh, several thousand uh, signatures of the of the um, citizens also got uh, coalition of the NGOs, and we are waiting uh, the moment to be able to present it of the Parliament of uh, Republic of Srpska uh, to try to influence decision and actually to cancel this project. And uh, so these two project these two campaigns are still ongoing, but uh, recently we got information that. Uh, our first big campaign against hydropower plants on Verbas River uh, actually got successful at the end. Even though that uh, campaign started in 2004 and 2005, uh, and actually in a way ended in 2005 when we managed to um, make a pressure on the municipal uh, parliament of Banja Luka to bring a decision against the project. So in this case, Banja Luka is a strong municipality. So in this case, uh, government was not going against the decision of the of the municipality. And uh, after 10 years of the status quo of the project, concessioners stepped out of the, from the project. And uh, we see the, the river stretch where they planned these hydropower plants is now safe. But we have a problem because in the same time, concessioner um, said that they will ask for compensation of about 25 million euros. That is huge money for, for, uh, for both entity and the local government. So we see this situation as really, even though that we won in campaign and that we were supposed to promote it and be happy about it, now we are not able to really promote it because in the same time, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, there is a possibility to have this financial, financial loss. And this can be also uh, linked with the TTIP situation and uh, this mechanism of the investor state dispute settlements that this kind of situation we can maybe expect in the future too and uh, even in worst uh, scenarios. So all these, all these uh, uh, campaigns we are trying to, to, to win of course and uh, even in situation when we are winning we have feeling that we are winning small and losing big and uh, for me it's a question also how um, we can really get together the power and uh, to, to reverse this trend so this is something I hope that uh, in discussion you will get into and uh, to give us also some advice how to proceed thank you I wish you um, fruitful discussion and a peaceful stay in Paris bye